The Astros took down the Rays in game five, so the ALCS is set, and the NLCS is set to begin tonight. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Talking Baseball. It is a beautiful Friday afternoon, October 11th. The Astros beat the Rays. They are who we thought they were. And uh, the second half of the show, we will be previewing the National League Championship Series. My name's John Boy. I'm coming to you from New Jersey. And I got the birthday boy, the 30-year-old killer from Denver, Jake, who's 30 years old today. Jake, how you doing? Death. I'm good. I'm good. I, uh, As you saw, I retired my eyes today. Um, I put a pair of glasses on. I don't think I'm ever going to take them off. That's um, what I... I don't, I, don't even I, don't, know what they, I don't even know what they do. I think they're... What are they? Screen glasses? What do we call these? Yeah, they, they're blue light glasses. They take the blue off the screen. The blue on the screen's bad for you. I I have mine, and I rarely take them off. So, yeah. I mean, I have x-ray glasses on now, and that's 30. So, yeah. yeah I mean, everything will be very professional today. Uh, very straightforward. You saw it in my text messaging. Uh, no more time for jokes. Uh, very professional episode coming up today. Yeah, you guys want to hear how Jake texted me this morning? I said, what up? He said, hello, James. Good morning to you and yours. I said, you good to go? He said, absolutely. Sounds great. (laughs) 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 It's more, it's not professional. It's more boilerplate, like whatever they, the given responses they offered you. Yeah, I I was not, I don't, they don't give me the given responses anymore. I think Apple gave up on me. Um, Man, being formal i know you and i we we did this with a guy jack curry who covers the yankees but he's always like very professional and we're like how do you do that yeah i couldn't do it they cut to him in studio and he is like severino dealt for seven eight innings with a couple strikeouts but we'll see how he does and the blah blah blah. and then it's just out and it's like wow that was so professional it's hard like yeah so you'll never do it don't worry about turning 30 you'll still be a dumb idiot at heart Okay. Thank when you. When I turned when I turned thirty, it was only a couple months ago. I'm fully over it now. Fully accepted it. So you'll accept your fate. But the things that hurt the most was you'll never be in your twenties again, which right. is just like clear. But just to hear it's like oh shit, fuck. Yeah. And uh, next big birthday's forty. Yeah. Yeah. The forty thing is daunting. Yeah. And that's yeah, I... fucking brutal. Whoever said that to me, I wanted to fight him. No, it's crazy. You you mentioned the you'll never be in your twenties again. As you know, I spent yesterday having a failed DMV trip, yeah. so that was my last day in my 20s. Yeah. Well, I don't think many people do, like, last day in their 20s events. I think they should. I think last day in your 20s should be more exciting than your 30th birthday. No, it's all I, might make that my, I might make that my revolution. Wow. Yeah. Retire your eyes, starting revolutions. You are 30 years old. You eyes sound are like gone. a loser. Eyes are done. <laughs> Start actually starting a revolution is more like nineteen year old. So you're actually aging backwards. Great. Perfect. Perfect. You watched the baseball last night? I did watch the baseball last night. Um fucking Garrett Cole, man. He uh <laughs> he's he's not human. Have we is he doing historic stuff? Is that a dumb <laughs> start your thirties with a dumb question? Um, is he breaking records? Basically, I think there's a record for most consecutive 10 K outings. And I believe he's right. at like 14. I don't know. I could have made that up, but he had 10 K's yesterday. He looks like a video game. I don't even get it. Eric Sogard walking so tall today. Yeah, I got him. Two for two uh, in the you ALCS. You guys did your part, huh? <laughs> he went two for two. All right, before I forget, this episode of Talking Baseball is brought to you by a bunch of cool people. Our most recent sponsors on Patreon, we thank all of them. First up, 
Oakley K. Oakley K. I think that's that can't be a first name, right? Oakley K. Uh, I like the first name Oakley. I think that's kind of fun. I I don't think I've met one, but I, know, I would go. I would call him Oaks. Oakley K. No, you yeah, know I what? Know. I just call him O. I just realized it. I just call him O. O's so thank you. O. I like Oakley. Okay. What about uh Oliver Klozoff? Yeah. It's probably, it's probably love Klozoff. him playing playing for the German national team. He's good. It's probably oh, it's probably Oliver Klozoff. But if you say Klozoff, it sounds like. Take your mm. clothes off, Oliver. Yeah, that, oh, that line's I'm, been used. I'm Mr. Clothes Off. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Nicholas Anthony Giampaolo. Good Paisan, yep. Nickname is Nag. Just his initials put together. Good wife joke. Finn Marable. <laughs> I, I don't know if I got that right. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> Marble. that's tough. <laughs> Finn's a cool name. I wonder if it's short for Finbar. We I have a friend who really wanted to name their son Finbar, and we thought it was weird at first, and now we kind of like it. I like the name Finn. Uh, Zachary Freeburn. Yep. And Parker Phelps. Parker Phelps. Love alliteration. We do like alliteration on this show. Yeah, we're big alliteration pod. Those are our most recent Patreon sponsors. We thank them very much. Patreon.com slash John Boy Media. Signs you up two dollars a month. Uh, jersey raffle. I got to do the raffle for the last month. I got to do a lot of stuff. I do tons of stuff. I'm trying to just watch baseball though. Anyway, let's get straight into this, Jake. Yes. The Rays suck. Or alternative narrative: the Astros right. are cheaters at home. Or alternative narrative number three: Astros are better than the Rays. Ooh, okay. Those are the options, huh? Yeah. Uh, three stands out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going with three as well. Three stands out. Um, I think some people might be disappointed, especially if any of our Yankee brethren have come over here. Whatever Houston's doing to try to steal pitches, I mean, that's baseball. That's not if they're not if they're using technology. Right. Um, which we we don't have any confirmation of that yet. Um, what we do know is Tyler Glasnow has two pitches, and one of them, his fastball, he was tipping. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you give if you give Houston that kind of information, they did what they did in the first inning. They it looked like batting practice. Yeah. Um, I want to. So what what we know, if you didn't know the tipping, basically you could see them all whispering to each other, which I love. Yeah. Love a good whisper train. Whisper movements. We tried to start one at winter meetings last year, remember? Yeah. So I love that. But I think what people, and I'm going to try and like look at all the footage closely and make a breakdown of my own. I think his glove hand. So if his glove was in, if it was tipped this way, like the edge of his glove was facing him, so that's down, it was one pitch. And if it was more up, it was another pitch. Yeah, they kept they kept saying higher. I think the fastball when he was going to throw the fastball, the glove was a little higher. Um, but yeah, you saw Bregman literally scored, <laughs> and I think Brantley was coming up, and he's like, "Hey, dude, when it's higher, stay on top of it," or something like that. And it's like, okay, so Houston knows what's going on. Get him out of there. Yeah. I mean, they're really good at picking that shit up. That when the Yankees went yeah. there early in the year, they picked up the uh, the Paxton's glove, and yep. it was so something so slight. So they're they're good at that. When we hung out with, who's the uh, catcher we hung out with? Oh, it Tolly, Josh, Josh Tolly. When we hung out with Josh Tolly, R.A. Dickey's old personal catcher for the Mets and then the Blue Jays, he said that. That old Blue Jays crew of Donaldson, Batista, and Carnacion, they could they could do this every game. Like they could figure yeah. out a tip, and they were just so good at it. It was mostly Batista was so good at it, and then they'd tell him, and he'd still ground out. And he was like, "What the fuck?" Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it is Come something on. that happened. It is something that yeah. happens, and that is, there is that is not cheating in any way in baseball. No, that is part of the game. 
uh, stealing signs. The fact, the fact the Rays were giving multiple signs with nobody on base means that they think that they have a way of stealing signs another way. Yeah, that's the sketchy part. Yeah. But this, finding out a guy tips pitches or or if the first base coach can see the signs or the third base coach, can, you can figure out his signs. That's just part of baseball. I mean, that's yeah. part of the fun of it all. But, yeah, I want to go look at the footage to see how much they were actually just, like, sitting or or I don't know. But Glass now said after Bregman single, he was like, something's a little weird. This isn't right. Yeah. So he went and checked it out, and then it was glove. And he admitted it. Glass now was like, it's pretty obvious I was tipping my pitches. Yeah. Talk about Which, a bad feeling on the mound. Yeah, Andy Pettit did it in the 2001 World Series. Got lit up by Arizona. And says he doesn't even, like, look back on that game. Like, he had to wash it from his entire brain. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a feeling that I don't think happens in any other sport. Like, football, you can watch tape on a quarterback. Basketball, you watch tape on guys. But, like, I don't know. If in basketball they, they shut off you going right because you're really good at going right, okay, you figure out something else. You make backdoor cuts. You, <laughs> you, you get open at three. If you're a pitcher and they know it's coming, that is a lonely, lonely feeling. Yeah. It says Kevin Cash addressed the potential tipping. I didn't see this yet. I'm aware there was speculation about pitch tipping. At the end of the day, give the guys the credit that went up to the plate. Tampa Bay Rays manager addresses. So, yeah, everyone was pretty diplomatic about it, I think. Yeah. Crazy. I hope that... uh the Yankees pitchers have their gloves and, and signs in order because they're going to be playing a lot of games and playing their first couple games in, in Houston. Do you think that because of their bats go to die, like they were so bad at the trop, do you put any credence on I saw a lot of people saying that, like, well, they were so bad at, away and then they just can hit everything at home. They got to be using technology. No. I think, I mean, there's home field advantage. There's... Uh, a, I mean, that Garrett Cole guy um, made things pretty difficult for Tampa when they were in Houston, two out of those three games. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Justin Verlander wasn't Justin Verlander. It's it's not like Verlander was pumping high 90s, hitting his spots, and like, wow, these Rays hitters, they're doing something special. It's like, no, this dude can't find his location, and his stuff doesn't look good. So, no, I, I, I don't put too much merit to that. Um, for the Tampa hitters or the Houston hitters. I mean, um, it was a hostile environment, and Tampa's got a lot of good pitchers. It was really loud at the end there. When they yeah. were about to get the first out, there's a shot. I didn't clip it because I was clipping I was clipping uh, something else, but there's a shot where Josh Reddick just looks at the crowd and kind of nods. He's like, oh, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a definite we we talked about it a little bit yesterday, but the pressure was on on Houston. Yeah, and even Girardi or or AJ said that at the beginning. They were like, if you walk around the streets, you got everyone saying, Let's go, win it, win it, win it. Your family's there. Um, pressure's on the home team in in elimination games. I mean, even I mean, through once we got to the seventh and eighth inning, and sure Tampa hadn't done anything, but neither had Houston. I mean Tampa shut out Houston for one, two, three, four, five, six, six straight innings. As Houston, you get nervous. You let, you know, there's a couple times there's one runner on base. If, if someone catches one, it becomes a one-run game. Um, you know, the, there, there was a couple timid moments, and then the eighth inning they took off. Um, they, uh, like, Snell went 1-1 without a, allowing a hit. Then Rowe comes in. He does good. Yarbrough came in, walked a guy. Nick Anderson is amazing. Yeah. What whatever whatever he figured out, give give me that same medicine. Did you listen to the game with volume on? Uh yes. I mi- I didn't. Uh I I did for a little bit then I went to n- no volume, but how someone in the chat just said how good was Girardi legitimately getting pissed off at AJ last night? Those guys hate each other. Girardi does yeah. not like Przinsky. Nobody likes Przinsky. Find me the person. Find me the person that's out there like, yes, A.J. Przinsky. He was one of the most hated players when he played, and now he's the guy in the booth? I don't get it. I think he's got some interesting insight like every now and then. 
But yeah, uh, I'm sure so would a lot of guys that aren't hated. Yeah, that's true. If you play the game, you should have some insight. <laughs> yeah, I hope that crew. See, I if I was watching that crew with my heart on the line. I'd hate it. I wouldn't be able to laugh at it. I'd be, I'd be like, this sucks. Yeah. And I think a lot of Astros fans were like, this sucks. They can, com- it completely took away from the game. Like they were just, just, it was, you want to hear AJ and Joe's opinions on a baseball game? Or do you want to watch a baseball game? Cause it's two different things happening. Yeah. So whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think, I think part of it's like a message from MLB that it's like, Hey, we've got these large markets. Like, if if you find a spot to talk about something, go for it and teach them. And it's like, no, I don't. I don't know. We're not it. The and in the NBA semifinals or the conference finals, you don't hear guys talking about like the value of a backdoor cut. It's like, no. If they're watching that, they kind of know what's going on. Yeah. Basketball analogies. You feel bad for the Rays, or are you happy for them? They won two at home. Um, I don't know. I I feel bad for a degree. I feel bad for a sports team that gets eliminated. Like they they believed and um. Oh, do you I have mean, a burn of this game? I do. <laughs> Shit. Shut up. Sorry. You're, you're cooking with gas, baby. You want to burn it, and then we'll talk about how how we feel about the. I race? can burn it. All right, here we go. Sorry, man. You're good. Burn a juicy game five at Minute Maid Park in Houston. The Rays and Tyler, please don't be made a glass now, trying to do the unthinkable against Garrett J. Cole World as he continues his King of Diamonds type season. Bottom one, when I tip, you hit. You put your bat up on my pitch. Tyler tipping his pitches and the Strohs went off. Play the music. Jose Altuve, Jose Altuve. RBI single for Jose. Hey, are you a tits man or an ass man? Neither, a bragman. man. Two RBI double. Yuli, Yuli. Oh, oh, let my runner score. Uh. Four nothing, Houston. Eric Sogard, so good. Solo shot off a of Cole in the second. Four to one from there. Donuts on the scoreboard. Ray's pen would have and Cole would have 10 Ks, two hits over eight innings. But bottom eight, Houston wants the Yanks. Daily, nightly, and ever so Brantley. Michael goes yard piece, followed by, play the music, Jose Altuve, Jose Altuve. He gets one of his own. Houston advances in game five, six, one final. Was that tip pitch lyric you had there? That was, uh, so what's the song? It's like, when I dip, you dip, you put your hands up on my hips or something like that. Is that a song? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, so I said, when I tip, you hit, you put your bat upon my pitch. Nice. Wow. It's a fucking weird brain they gave me, but <laughs> that's where my brain jumped to instantly. This makes sense. When you tip. I don't even know. I don't even know the original fucking song. <laughs> when, when I tip, you hit, you put your bat upon my pitch. Yeah. It's so simple. It worked. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if if Stu Scott was still here. I don't know if he would give me a big hug or just choke me out on sight. I don't know. You kind of got the same glasses style on now. Hopefully both. You you got Stu you got Stu Scott glasses on. It starts with a big hug and then he just chokes me. Maybe he definitely call you. Uh... A loser face. There's some really cool stories about like the original Sports Center crew. Like they used to play pickup basketball, and it used to be like intense. <laughs> like dudes used to go at each other. That's for another time, I guess. That is for another time. We'll talk about that another time. So yeah. feel bad for the Rays. I mean, is it is it patronizing to say I feel happy for the Rays? They got in the wild card. They won two games at home, and they took the Houston Astros to Game Five. In the DS, um, they didn't make the playoffs last year. So if you're doing, you know, step ladder bit by bit calculations, I don't. I try not to say this as 
a dick. But I don't think the Rays fan base is like World Series or bust. They kind of can't be because they've never won a World Series. No, it it gets really tricky. It gets really tricky because technically they went three and three this playoffs. They won the wild card game at Oakland (laughs) and then they go uh, two for five against Houston. So like there's a lot of wins there. Their pitching looks so good. Um, And like there's, you know, there were some guys that that didn't pitch a lot this series that are also good. And like I I also think they have some injuries like where's uh, is that Alvarado guy hurt? I know he was filthy at the beginning of the season. Um, Like they. I, I think their next step is figuring out. It it seems like they have a surplus of pitching. So it's are they going to turn that into more hitters? Um, the fear there is that if you do that and then you run out of pitching, you look like big old idiots because there's, quote, unquote, no such thing as a surplus of pitching. You're happy, but, dude, after they won that second game, they thought they were going to win this series. Yeah. Like, that's just a natural fan reaction. Why were you grinning like an idiot for a minute? Because <laughs> I when, when I tip, you hit. <laughs> You put your you bat put your up. bat up on my pitch. <laughs> you put your bat up. I keep thinking about it. It keeps cracking me up. <laughs> Imagine Abby. the pitcher saying that to the batter. When I tip, you hit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could see that. Could I, I picture like a bad JV baseball coach saying something like that? Like uh, b- during batting practice, you know, have all the fun you want. But when I'm out there, I'm on the mound throwing BP. I tip my hat. You're hitting. I'm th- I'm imagining like a hardball esque movie. Kids playing sure. baseball, and it's very, it's very, uh, it's like a kids bop movie, High School okay. Musical esque. And they find out that the other team is tipping pitches, and then that it turns into a musical, and that song's playing, and the pitcher's like, "When I tip." You hit. I got this, this whole thing in my head. It's cracking me up. This uh, this is definitely an off season episode. But are we due for a good baseball movie? Are we due for a bad baseball movie? Um, yeah, we should be due for a good baseball movie. I mean, what was the most recent baseball movie? There was Trouble with the Curve, Jackie Robinson's movie. So let's see. Forty two was in twenty thirteen. Um, Million Dollar Arm was twenty fourteen. Trouble with the curve twenty twelve. Moneyball was twenty eleven. So there was like there was four straight years there where they came out with a baseball movie and now we've been shut out. Um and then yeah, I mean going back a little further, two thousand six, bench warmers, fever pitch, bad news bears, Mr. Three Thousand, the rookie. Those were all in a three-year span. We need some baseball movies. What the hell? A, there was a movie called um, The Phenom, which is very slow. It's not really a baseball movie, but I liked it. That was Xenon the Zequel. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I'll meet you in my room. <laughs> Don't get me started with Xenon. All right. Try not to. Um, There's a movie in 2014 called Hero. This is about a little league coach, Joe Finn, whose pursuit of fame and fortune leaves him with little but broken relationships, particularly with his son. Sounds sad. Yeah, we need a good baseball movie. Yeah. Like a comedy baseball movie. A good one. Yeah. So if anyone's got one. Just get Kevin Costner on it, okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Are we done with this? I mean, we'll we'll preview the ALCS. Yankees versus Astros, everyone's in for a treat. Yeah, we we kind of got ourselves I don't know if we were excited as Yankee fans with the thought of Tampa, but there there was a chance that Houston was gonna go down, especially after watching the Dodgers go down. Um and they held serve in a in a very Houston way. Cole was untouchable, except for one pitch to Eric Sogard. Um, and the the lineup, they crushed in the first. And then, you know, just to get away from an anxious ninth inning with Roberto Ozuna, Ozuna um, you know, Brantley catches one and Altuve catches one and it's over. I have an analogy or whatever I want to make if the Yankees can beat the Astros. Sure. 
It's, you know, when, uh, when you can't open a jar and then you hand it to someone and they get it and you're like, well, I loosened it for you. I think the Rays might have loosened the Astros for the Yankees. Making Cole only be available until game three. Granky's got to pitch game one and five. Yeah, I mean, in in theory, I mean, we'll we'll see the Ray, how this series. I'll, I'll leave it. The Rays left an effect for the next series. The Twins did not leave an effect for the next series. I yeah, I, I said it about that game four. I mean, I I. And maybe it's a little bit hopeful as Yankee fans, to be completely honest, but we were hoping that game four, because the Rays earned game three. They played good baseball. They brought it back to Tampa, and they won their game. They earned that. Game four was the surprise. Verlander. Um, and they got him. And, yeah, that that's going to be interesting. Is that game four of the ALDS going to have a true effect on the ALCS because we thought, A, there's a chance Tampa advances, or B, I mean, Houston does not have their rotation lined up like they want to. I mean, in theory, goal would Cole would be 3-7. and seven. If the Yankees can jump on some games earlier in the series, they might only see Garrett Cole once. That's insane. Yeah. That's awesome for <laughs> us. Yes. Cool. All right, let's move on to preview the NLCS. But first, a word from a potential sponsor. Cool. Everyone in the chat saying that we need to get a sponsor from uh, Felix Gray's or something. They're all buying their own now, which is true. I, I, I've reached out to two companies and, and let them know like, Hey, I love your product. I'd love to plug it. Give me the monies. Give me all the monies. So until that happens, don't you guys even think about that. So. NLCS tonight, Jake. Cardinals versus the Natitude. I mean, and talk about segueing from Garrett Cole. I mean, does it get any better than Anibal Sanchez and Miles Mi- Michaelis. <coughs> oh. <laughs> both both pitched really well. I mean, I what Anibal Sanchez was throwing the other day is baseball porn. It's Efa's pitches. Um I mean definition of the old warrior giving it one more roll. Um I don't know, man. In in St. Louis, uh I is there this Sounds lame, but I think it's like the only way to say. It. Like, what are what are you even thinking about when you think of this series? I haven't like I want to piece together the whole series a little bit, and not just this game because I haven't really thought about it a lot. Sure. I want to see. Um, let me find. Well, it's going to be Michaelis, Wainwright, and Flaherty for St. Louis, and then yes. it'll be it'll be Anibal. Annabal, Scherzer, and Strasburg. So these teams met seven times in the regular season. And uh, the Cardinals won five. The Nationals won two. Again, that doesn't mean really anything at all because who knows who was healthy, who was pitching, or or whatever happened. So let's go uh, Miles Michaelis. Do you think he faced... Do you think he faced the Nationals? What was that? Um, headphones gave out. Um, All right. He faced them twice this year. How about that? Okay. Interested. Yeah. Uh, Miles Michaelis, six innings pitched, eight hits, three earned runs, and uh, they took the loss that day. As Drupal Cabrera got him after Howie Kendrick hit a triple off of him, Rendon got him for a single, and um, Howie Kendrick hit a home run. Wow, Howie Kendrick had a triple and a home run versus Michaelis this season. How about that? He's feeling pretty good about himself, too. Yeah, he's coming in pretty happy. All right, that was in September. Way earlier in the year, Michaelis went six innings pitched, Seven hits, one earned run. 
Seven hits and eight hits. I mean, I, I know the runs are low, but that's that sounds like traffic. Traffic. Jan Gomes had an RBI ground out after Howie singled. All right, time to find Howie's numbers versus Michaelis because it seems like they're rather good. Sounds a pretty good. Um, Michaelis for- struggled in his first game of the DS in the first inning and then settled down and actually pitched really well. Yeah. For me, I, I think the national story, and uh, I'll keep beating the drum on this, A, is Adam Eaton. I believe in Trey Turner. I like him in the leadoff spot. Soto and Rendon are just monsters. If Adam Eaton has a series and those guys have a couple guys in front of them, I I, I just I just don't think that Washington lineup will slow down. But it's been funny. Dude, Washington was... A couple outs from being eliminated from the wild card. They were a couple outs from being eliminated in the DS. Um, I don't know. They're, are they team of destiny or are they team of Howie Kendrick stats versus Miles Miklas? Dude, How, Howie Kendrick. I got to tweet this out right away before someone snags me on it. Howie Kendrick is 8 for 11 off of Michaelis. That's pretty good. 8 for 11. And in 2019, this is the game log. Single, 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 triple, home run, fly ball, deep center field. That's pretty good, huh? Howie Kendrick looking good against Mike Olis. Damn. Damn. You got to get some Anibal stats before the, the Cardinals fans listen and get mad at you because they are not I, liking what you're hear, saying about Miles. Cardinals fans, every fan base is just under everything. You guys hate this fan, huh? Yeah. Like, I heard all those subtle jabs. Subtle jabs is kind of just what I do about everything in my life. I made a yeah. subtle jab at my own hand the other day. It was being too slow. Your own hands? Yeah, they were being too slow. Damn. Fumbled my wallet, dropped it, stupid fucking hand. It's not that subtle. It was pretty uh it was pretty out there. Bad hands day is tough. Um Sanchez, Anibal, with his Ephus pitch. All right, how many times do you think he faced because he moved around. How many times do you think he faced the Cardinals this season? This season? Oh, he got I'm guessing he got one start against the Cards. One. You're right. Congrats. On, it's, it's in uh, <laughs> April 30th, so who cares? Matters. But we'll talk about it. Five innings pitched, five hits, three earned runs, seven strikeouts. He balked in it. Ooh, watch out for that. All right, here's how he gave up his runs. Single to Jose Martinez. He walked Paul DeYoung. Uh, he walked Yachty. Colton Wong, single. Harrison Bader, single. That's how they got all the runs off of him. I feel like, and I'll I'll zoom out a little bit. Yeah, do it. Zoom out. Feels like game three. I know everyone is always obsessed with the even games or the odd games because if you win them, if you won one, three, five, and seven, you win the series. Games one and two are in St. Louis. We've already mentioned this pitching matchup, Anibal Sanchez versus Miles Michaelis. No offense to those guys, but a lot of the other names on the mounds are going to be more impressive this series. Game three is looking like Strasburg Flaherty. And it feels like that is going to be, that game is going to be a huge momentum swing for whoever wins it. Yeah, we got to do game one first, Jake. I know, but uh, I was I told you I was Who's zooming game out. 2? Who's game 2? Game 2 is Scherzer Wainwright. Oh, that's that excites me more than Flaherty Strasburg. Really? You hate young guys. Nah. Nah, not really. Yeah, I was going to say. Come but on. But I like Wayno. <laughs> Wayne Wainwright's fun, but he's not he's not the other guy. You should have seen his face during game 5, Wainwright. They just kept cutting to him every now and then dugout, and he was just sitting there like like a like a dad watching his like son play baseball yeah. and like winning, he was like, "Man, we're doing so good. I'm so proud of the guys." <laughs> can you can you believe they're doing it? <laughs> um. All right, 
Anibal Sanchez numbers versus these Cardinals hitters. Let's see. You think anyone owns them? I didn't even do anyone else for Michaelis because Howie owns them so much. I didn't yeah, even look just at Howie Kendrick. Uh, let's see. It looks like Matt Weeders, which probably isn't going to come into play. Hey, I've got, I've got one for you, Manager John Boy. Yeah. Knowing those numbers, because 8 for 11 is insane. Like, would there be a world where you move Howie Kendrick to the top of the lineup? No. Messing with a good thing? Yeah, no. I, don't, I wouldn't do that. You just hope okay. that he gets his, and when his time comes, he gets it. Yeah. Because um, you can't bank fully on BVP, even though they are pretty cool. Yeah. Single, 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 triple home run, deep fly ball. I should go find the footage of that, but I don't want to. That would make for a better tweet. Take up some time. I already got to find out how uh, Glassnow was tipping his pitches. What else you got in the series? Who do you think is going to be the hero? The hero. Well, I'll, I'll be honest, and my Cardinal fans won't like this. I've been... Uh, I've had some strong natitude. I, I filled out one of those dumb playoff brackets uh, that everyone was doing before the playoffs, and I, I had the Nats moving on. Um, I I don't know. They're they're pitching so strong. Soto has been for me. Soto's the story. Uh, I mean, I I think there's a chance that this 20 year old kid leads the Nationals to the World Series after Bryce Harper was supposed to be the hero of that franchise for, what, seven years? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think Soto ends up being the story. Or it's just the Cardinals. I mean, we, we saw that they're doing everything. We saw Mike Schilt's speech. We saw Matt Carpenter taking himself out of the deciding game. Um, and you look at that team, and there's nobody that jumps out like a Juan Soto. So, I mean, it's either the Cardinals as this organization and St. Louis trying to be a championship city – or it's got to be the Soto show. Yeah. I was trying to see who, who, who had the best. Like, Rendon had seven hits in five games. He had a 412 batting average. Um, he had a pretty good series. I think, he's, I think like his career, he's being overlooked. <laughs> yeah, he, absolutely. He had the highest OPS, the uh, highest batting average, highest on-base percentage. And highest slugged, slug, slugging percentage for the Nationals. And we're all sitting here I- agreeing that Juan Soto's the story. Yeah. And that's kind I mean, of Rendon's whole career. He just gets overlooked. Yeah. I mean, Soto's were pretty big hits. <laughs> um, to Basically to win the wild card and to win the NLDS. So I, R- Rendon's been awesome. And him and Soto, that, that's why I keep going back to Adam Eaton. If Adam Eaton gets on base at like a 3 30 clip i i think the nats win because that's just too much action in front of those guys yeah all right do the um do the cardinals have a lefty they're gonna use for soto is it miller versus soto show yeah oh yeah that's exciting that's something to look out for that's exciting dude that sucks man (laughs) (laughs) oh who's got more pressure there i mean each each player's got to think about it like the other one's got more pressure. Like Soto's got to think like, all right, who's your guy that's going to come face me? He's got to face yeah. me every game. That sucks for him. And Andrew Miller's got to be thinking it. You know, it's all attitude. <laughs> it's all don't make a mistake because that dude will hit it. Well, Greg Bird told us like when they yeah. played, when the Yankees and the Indians played in 2017, we hung out with Greg Bird afterwards and. We we're like you. What were you, what was going through your head? And he was like, "Well, I knew they were going to use Miller on me every game, so I just knew I had to get to Miller. So I basically like prepped for that at bat." Yeah, and I mean, if you're Kolarek, you're essentially barely <clears throat> playing baseball, so you have the advantage as long as you could throw strikes. I mean, Andrew Miller's a pitcher. <laughs> he's he's not coming from the first baseman slot. Um, although he, he's, he's got some good extension over there, but those, those are, those at bats are going to be fun. I'm excited for that. On the Cardinal side, Goldie had the most hits. Oh, Goldie and Ozuna almost had the same exact stats, Jake. They both had 21 at bats in five games. They both had nine hits. They both had two home runs. They both had a 429 batting average, a 478 OBP. And uh, their OPS is basically the same 
Goldie outslugged Ozuna a little bit. Isn't that wild? Yeah. If if you're Washington, there's three dudes you don't want to see up in important at bats. Goldie, Ozuna, and Yadier Molina. Ozuna, I've liked his at bats because he'll he'll just throw the the barrel at the ball. Like yeah. he, he doesn't have an A swing and this is my A swing. He's like, oh, I'll just put, I'll do what I have to do. He even I if he has those... to strike out and run to first to get the RBI. He's a constant threat. If if he could open up this series 0 for 0 for 9 and you're still scared when he comes to the plate. Yeah. It's going to be a good series. I hope this one's a good series. I think I think uh the ALCS is going to get a lot of hype because it's two like right. two monsters that were on a collision course, and it's like, all right, we got it. But I hope the NLCS gets a lot of hype because now these are kind of not surprise teams, but somewhat. The Braves and the Dodgers were everyone's favorites. They were the division leaders. They didn't have to worry yeah. down the stretch at all, and they're both out. Do you, Is there anything to – do you think – you know, the Nationals have three good starters. Two of them are really good. Patrick Corbin is is good. Do you think there's anything, like game one is in St. Louis. Do you think there's a little extra pressure on St. Louis to get game one because they're going to be facing Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin the next three? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be very similar with the Yankees facing Granke in game one with Verlander Cole behind him. Like, it's more pressure on the okay. Yankees to win game one. It's more pressure on uh, the cards to win game one. So you're not down 0-1 with the three dudes. Yeah. How's – uh trying to find – what was uh, <clears throat> Michaelis's – what was his line in game one? Because then he made give, a relief I'll, appearance, I'll give right? a Jakey Bold prediction that'll make St. Louis fans hate me. Okay, go. The, the road team will win the first three games of this series. So that would put the Nats up 2-1 to one after three? Yeah. Wow. Didn't know you were going to be a jerk call once you turn 30. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't believe in Michaelis. If there's... I I love Scherzer and Strasburg. I think they're those two are on our are on a mission from God, like Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling shit. Michaelis went five innings pitched, three hits, one earned run in game one against the Braves. After a rocky start where he was like nervous, couldn't spin his curveball, walk, then the caught stealing helped, then walk, then single, then they reached on an error, then got two fly balls. So like Things unraveled on him, and then he settled down. I'm now rooting for Michaelis. I'm rooting for and the we, Cardinals tonight. We, we've only mentioned one guy who's coming out of the, the bullpen. The bullpens are going to be a huge factor. <laughs> um, like, even more in the five-game set. Um, and I, I don't know. I guess, I, would you give St. Louis? Who's, whose bullpen do you have more confidence in? And let's, St. Louis. let's do it. <clears throat> But including Carlos Martinez as the closer, because basically oh, no. right now, right now you have two reliable closers for Washington or two reliable relievers for Washington, and nobody else. And St. Louis, you have a few guys you believe in, but you don't really have a closer right now. Yeah. Um. I, damn. I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting. Carlos Martinez, want, I don't believe in him <clears throat> at all. Does does someone like Giovanni Gallegos turn it on, or who who steps up from the Cardinals bullpen this series? Um, because yeah, I mean, and Cardinals fans again, turn your ears off. But there's an argument to be said that like the Nationals are essentially stronger in starting pitching, hitting, and bullpen. <laughs> They get tricky with some things with the extra rest days and the longer series. They can <clears throat> utilize like some starters in different ways. Uh, they still have like you know Miller. Um, Webb wasn't good. <clears throat> Carlos Martinez was awful. Gallegos was good. Uh, 
It's a guy with the red beard. Braba? John, Bre, Breba? Brabia? I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry. I still like that better than the, the Nationals, man. I mean, they got two guys, and if you need a bridge a gap at all, you have to use a starting pitcher. Well, yeah, and I think that's the thing. I mean, I, I think you're going to have Corbin available for game one. I um, think that's, he, uh, that's a win for the Cardinals. He Corbin looked great in the game five, man. He looked great. Um, and they're, they're not going to need Corbin to start till game four. Um, and I, I guess that's the thing, like Scherzer and Strasburg, you may not need any bullpen. Yeah, but that's, they're walking a fine line with the nationals. If they need to use Tanner Rainey, Fernando Rodney, Hunter Strickland. No, those are their three. Like they have Hudson. They have Doolittle, and then they have three guys who you actively want to avoid. So if yeah. they're down in the seventh inning and their starter needs to come out, the game's over. Yeah. Well, Carlos Martinez. I there there'll be there'll be a couple good late fireworks shows in this in this series. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, game one tonight. We're excited for it. I think that's all we got. Jake, how you doing? You uh, you feel like you got any more to say, or we touch everything? Do you doing anything for your birthday tonight? Um, I don't know. I I think we're supposed to be doing some like some haunted haunted bar thing or something. Um, oh, nice. You love being scared. Yeah. Um, that definitely not my girlfriend who loves haunted stuff. Um, making that plan, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I I'll, I'll say this back to St. Louis. There's a good chance that I could be wrong about everything. St. Louis has some really good juju going. They're a great sports town, and like if St. Louis win, St. Louis wins this series, I'm not gonna be shocked at all. Like it's just they they've got it rolling. But I I think the Nats are the favorites. Is that unfair? Uh, are they the favorites? I don't know. I have Cardinals are favorites in my head. Okay. But I wanna I wanna backtrack on something. I said I was rooting for the Cardinals. Sure. I'm not rooting I'm rooting for good games and good storylines. Yeah, we like I games. honestly could care less who wins. Oh yeah. I mean this is gonna be a big time whoever's down one run in the eighth will be rooting for that team. Yeah. In the ALCS I'm rooting for the Yankees. Hey, I've got kind of a loserish baseball question, but that's what these glasses do to me now. Um do you think the Nats should have home field advantage? Because they had a better regular season record. Yeah, I do. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I firmly do. Yeah. Like if the Twins would have had a home field advantage over the Rays? Yeah. Well, they have a better record. Divisions are funky. Yeah. Maybe I'm starting to come your side on that scheduling thing. You get out of here. My side's the busy. Well, your side wouldn't allow the twins to think they're so good. Yeah, and I mean, I just, I more so want to get stars in front of people so they can become fans of guys so ba baseball can be popular, but. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's nice, but I just. I like the division because I like taking pride in, like, the AL East is usually brutal. Or, you know, if you have a hard division, there's a hard division. But uh, when you have a shitty division like the AL Central and a bunch of teams trying to lose, it kind of ruins. Maybe baseball, this is, now this stems to just, like, let's stop having 10 teams tank every season. Yeah. Maybe that's the biggest issue here. Yeah. Don't fix yeah, I mean, you could the scheduling because teams are tanking. Fix the culture of uh, baseball clubs. I, I think there you could make a pretty easy argument that the NL East is a tougher division than the NL Central this year, and the Braves had more wins than St. Louis, and now St. Louis hosts home field. I don't know. It's it's a conversation. I, I'm losing a lot of my St. Louis fans. Yeah, you're a jerk. 30-year-old Jake. I'm a jerk. 30-year-old jerk Jake. Why don't you sing some Nelly to cheer him up? 
If you want to go and take a ride with me, yeah, <laughs> Bob Dylan singing Nelly. That's good. Make a whole album. Yeah, must be the money. <laughs> We're out of here. Thank you guys for hanging out with us for a little bit. Talking baseball. We'll be back tomorrow to recap game one of the NLCS and preview game one of the ALCS. See you later.